It's Christmas time, folks, and what better way to celebrate than look at every Thomas and Friends CGI Christmas episode from season 17 through 24. There are actually a lot of better ways, but uh, not only will I be doing that, but I'll be ranking them as well. Of course, there are a lot, but I'll only be doing the actual Christmas episodes, not all the winter ones. So, episodes like Snow Place, like Home, and Well Be Tender won't be on here. But, uh, yeah, let's just get started. I literally have nothing else to say here. I am not good at commentary. Santa's Little Engine. Santa's Little Engine is the first episode that Brenner's team made, and boy was it a very strong start. The Earl asks Topham to play the role of Santa Claus for the Christmas Fair. He requests that Topham comes in driving a sleigh, but Topham insists that he just uses Winston. When he does, the Earl decides that he needs to get a real sleigh. When it comes, the Earl tells Topham to get comfortable and Thomas to back up. Thomas accidentally hits Topham and he slides down the mountain. Thomas saves him from the bottom, of course, and becomes Thomas the Red-Nosed Engine. He ends up taking Topham into the castle for the fair instead of the sleigh. This episode isn't the most big, plot-heavy thing ever, but a huge plot isn't always what's the, you know, the one thing that determines a good episode. The interactions between the Earl and Topham were so entertaining, and the build-up to Winston's sleigh design always cracks me up. And Thomas with the red nose and branches is it's just adorable, look at him! So this isn't the strongest episode, but it's a solid one. The missing Christmas decorations. Diesel 10 is upset that the Diesel Works doesn't have nearly as many Christmas decorations as Tidmouth Sheds, since Topham is like trains this or something. So he steals Tidmouth's decorations. He does this a few more times till Percy spots him, leading him to like the whole steam team chasing him. What? They follow him to the Diesel Works where Paxton reveals that Topham did order decorations for them. Then Percy notices Sydney hanging, waiting for his wheels. When he's told he's been waiting for about two years, Percy makes sure Sydney finally gets the wheels. This episode is... something. I absolutely love the ending with Percy and Sydney's dynamic starting, but the rest of the episode is really strange. This is the last evil act that Diesel 10 commits, and it's stealing Garland. Uh, wow! I'm not a huge fan of the main plot, it's basically just the Grinch but Thomas. And I hate CGI Diesel 10, but I can't help but love Paxton and Sydney. They're just amazing. Paxton, come on! Long Lost Friend. This episode is a follow up to Tale of the Brave. Gator comes back to the island and is excited to see Percy. Gator meets up with Thomas, who tells Percy the news. Percy follows Gator's steps around the island and keeps thinking more and more that Gator doesn't want to see him. All the while, Gator is trying to find where a smudge label delivery of salt is going. They finally meet at the docks, and the salt was meant for the docks? What? So the delivery from the docks was for the docks? Uh, I don't know, th this episode is wholesome at the end, but the whole thing confuses me. Gator is trying to figure out where this delivery is going, when it's for the place where it came from. And when Percy finds him, he says that he's staying on Sodor, but we never see him again. I don't know, I can enjoy this episode, but it's not necessarily that great. Last train for Christmas. When some passengers can't get onto Condor's train on Christmas Eve, he promises a little boy that he'll come back with one more train. He has to figure out how he can make one last train quickly when Thomas suggests the slip coaches. Connor makes his run, but the snow piles up. Topham says he'll have to cancel the train, but all the engines come together to clear the tracks for Connor. Connor has a little wholesome moment with the little boy at the end. Topham bids goodnight, and the episode comes to a nice warm ending. Let me get my single problem out of the way. There did not need to be a scene of Thomas rescuing a slip coach. It, 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 it just stops the story. Luckily not for too long though. Besides that, I think this is the first time since season 3 that a Christmas episode felt like a little mini movie. Something about the way it was animated looks so cinematic and the plot is so strong. There's also a few cute bits where the engine mistake Harold for Santa Claus. This episode is absolutely amazing and is a must watch for every Christmas season. Duncan the Humbug Duncan goes around the Scarloe Railway making everyone feel bad about the Christmas season. Rusty then informs him that Mr. Percival is going to give everyone a new coat of paint. When Duncan still finds something to complain about, Rusty decides to talk to Mr. Percival. He tells Duncan that he needs to be kind to everyone for the day in order to get his paint. He hilariously goes around being nice until he approaches Luke, who is stuck on a hill where he snapped. 
When he realizes his rudeness towards Luke, he feels bad and decides to help him. The next day, Duncan decides to tell Mr. Percival what happened, but he's proud that Duncan helped Luke and admits he was also wrong for making Duncan not be himself for the day. This episode has a super solid plot, and I love the Brenner era style of having both sides be wrong in their own way. Duncan was wrong to be so grumpy, but Rusty and Mr. Percival were wrong to make Duncan be kind all day. And the animation is amazing, that one shot in the viaduct just wow! And of course, Duncan is always fun to watch. The perfect gift. Percy's taking his scrap to Reg when he realizes how non festive the scrapyard looks. He decides to find Reg the perfect gift. He tries multiple things, but nothing works until Percy brings Reg some lovely scrap. And it's revealed that Reg has been making a Christmas tree made of scrap. He also gives Percy a star made of a fan. This episode's plot is so simple, but it works so well. It shows a wholesome bond between Percy and Reg, and Percy having the star at the end was adorable. But this episode also has many funny moments. My favorite is when Reg puts the tree in the wood chipper and Percy just watches in shock. It has me dying every time. Little something to cheer up the scrapyard and... Wow, what's that noise? Sorry. For such a simple episode, it's so strong. A cranky Christmas. Thomas and Edward are chilling at Tidman Town Square when Topham asks Thomas to collect a crate from the docks for a surprise. When Cranky finds the crate, he accidentally drops it and thinks he broke it, so he hides it from everyone's view. Thomas makes an extra round between Tidmouth and Brenda, making him lose sand from his sandbox. Salty finds the crate and Thomas takes it to Tidmouth when he runs out of sand. The crate flies off the flatbed and Thomas thinks he broke it. Topham reveals that it's just skates rattling. Thomas returns to the docks for the night and Cranky accidentally tells everyone that he thought he broke and hid the crate. When I drops it. Huh? But everyone forgives him because it's Christmas time and I, yeah, I guess he meant well. Sure, let's go with that. I love that Edward gets a bit of spotlight time whenever the episode is at Tidmouth. They could have literally used anyone else, but they decided to use Edward because why not? And Cranky still having insecurities really shows in this episode. Also, seeing Salty and Christmas decorations looks so funny, I don't know why. This episode is, you know, it's solid overall. Diesel's ghostly Christmas. Here's the big one. Diesel's very grumpy and refuses to help anyone while preparing for the Earl's grand Christmas lunch. This gives Thomas the idea to play a trick on him. He, Emily, Salty, and Paxton play as ghosts and tell Diesel about the past, present, and future of Christmas with Diesel acting the way he does. He finally feels remorse for being such a rude engine and even helps Topham get to the Earl's Christmas lunch. This episode is a lot more than that, but it would take way too long to explain the whole two-parter. I absolutely love this episode and what it does. I know I said I don't like the missing Christmas tree decorations for just being the Grinch but Thomas, but I love this one for being a Christmas Carol but Thomas. This one works a lot better because everyone's actually in character. Also, hearing Diesel scream is funny. This episode is also a must watch every Christmas season. Letters to Santa. When Percy's struggling through the snow with the children's letters, Harold offers to help. This only makes Percy cross and reminds him of the events of Percy and Harold. Percy later leaves a sack of letters at dry off and Harold tries to get it to Percy. Percy thinks he's just trying to race until he reaches a snow drip. Harold takes Percy's mail, which makes him cross again that night. But when he's told that Harold didn't return, he worries for him and goes all around the island and to the mainland to find him. He does find him and later that evening brings Harold a fuel tanker. I still can't believe the team decided to bring back Percy and Harold's dynamic from the classic series. And Percy is perfectly in character here. He wants to be helpful, but is also a little hot headed. I also love the explanation of how the letters from Sodor get to the North Pole. And Tommy Jeremy is there, so the episode is automatically amazing. The Christmas Coffee Pot Marion is clearing trees for a new warehouse when she finds a talking tree. 
She tries convincing everyone that the tree talks when Thomas discovers it was actually Glenn behind the tree. Thomas and Percy try to hide him from Topham so he won't be scrapped. The Earl is taken to him and decides to have him restored. But then, Topham comes into the steamworks and reveals that the Earl called him for permission. Glenn takes Topham to the Earl's Christmas party and he becomes part of the Olfstead crew. This episode does so much right. Besides Marion, every character is part of the Farquhar line, and yes, Olfstead is a part of that. And Glenn's existence just makes everything so much better. After his absence in season 19, he really made a grand entrance. Marion is also hilarious this whole episode. I suppose this means your magic tree can walk as well as talk, Marion. Oh, yes! You're right, sir! It must be the most magical Christmas tree ever! Terence breaks the ice. Thomas picks up some Christmas trees from Terence's field when Topham tells Thomas he needs a huge tree for the Earl's Christmas party. When Thomas tells Terence about it, he crosses the pond to get a tree that he knows will be perfect. When Terence makes his way back, the ice breaks, and Thomas has to save him. They end up both being at the party, and the Earl seems funnily content with having the tiniest tree ever. Terence's return was definitely a surprise, and we get yet another railway series or TV series, if you will, flashback. I do only wish, though, that the pond wasn't like 20 feet wide. The workmen walk around it and get there before Terence. But it is nice to see Terrence get a little too cocky about his caterpillar tracks. I think this is just another solid episode. Daisy's perfect Christmas. Daisy plans on having a perfect Christmas, including every tradition she's experienced before. As she goes about her route, every tradition goes wrong. There's no snow. Vickerstown isn't decorated. The children sing songs with the wrong lyrics. The small engines don't give presents, but fake snow. The truck starts singing. Harold puts a star on the rescue center tree. It's just horrible for Daisy. When she returns to the shed, Brian, Judy, and Jerome laugh and tell her that Christmas wasn't perfect like before, but a new kind of perfect. And it ends with them turning out some surprise Christmas lights for Daisy. The more the episode goes on, the more you can tell Daisy's upset. The moral for this one is one that I just love. Not everything has to be the same. And I show that by Daisy being the only upset character throughout the whole episode. And the truck singing in the final act is like the best thing ever. They weren't even causing trouble. They were just vibing. We wish you a Merry Christmas! We wish you a Merry Christmas! And a Happy New Year! Thomas's Animal Arc. When Thomas passes by the animal park, headkeeper Jack tells him that the heat boiler is broken and he's waiting for Emily to bring a new one. Thomas goes to the docks to see what's happening, just in time to hear Carly say it won't come until after Christmas. So Thomas has to think of a warm place for the animals to stay. Henry and Topham suggest the steamworks. Thomas makes his way there, but the tunnel is covered by snow. So instead, he makes his way to Tidman Sheds. This episode was meant to be part of season 21, but made it into 22 because 21 was cut short. It's also the only big world episode to have an after scene. Even James warmed to the idea. Here, chicky chicky chick, come to Uncle James. <gasps> oh, how cute. <laughs> the central plot is a really interesting one and entertaining. It's definitely one of the best big world episodes. And I think it's because of it being written by Brenner's team. Also, this joke is amazing. The warmest place on Sodor. The steamworks is pretty hot, sir. Quiet, Henry. I'm trying to think. Kangaroo Christmas. It's Christmas time in Australia, and Thomas learns that they celebrate Christmas in the summer. At a station, Thomas meets a girl I can't remember the name of with a kangaroo plushie. A real kangaroo with a lost joy mistakes the toy for his child and straight up takes it. Thomas goes on this wild kangaroo chase until Isla finds it, and Thomas finds the kangaroo's actual joey. When they get its attention, it straight up yeets the plushie and takes its baby back. And I think ever since season 16's The Christmas Tree Express, we've had a bad Christmas episode. The only reason it's Christmas is so the child would have an excuse to have a kangaroo toy. 
And the episode is so boring with only a couple moments that made me laugh like the kangaroo absolutely chucking the toy out of screen. I don't know, I just can't get myself to like this episode. Here's bright idea. Thomas takes Topham to the mainland to deliver his end of the year report. Thomas is assured that Topham will arrive back on Spencer with a surprise for the Earl's Christmas party. The next day, Mr. Percival assigns the engines their jobs. When Nia gets to Ellsborough Harbor, she's told by Skiff what a lighthouse is and what it does. Spencer is blocked from reaching Sodor, so Mr. Percival sends Harold to collect him. Nia then has to collect a surprise delivery from the animal park. On her way back to the castle, she notices Harold struggling and rushes there. She suggests to the Earl to cover the big wheel in lights, similar to the lighthouse. This works, and Topham comes out of Harold dressed up as Santa Claus, and Nia's surprise delivery turns out to be reindeer. Nia is called a hero, and the episode ends. I feel like this episode isn't talked about enough. Nia's finally being used in character she was meant to be. Her being from Africa doesn't intrude the plot, and she's actually shown to be a clever engine. It's also nice partially seeing the mainland again, but not as some big adventure. I think this is also one of the best Big Gold episodes. It has a solid plot and a good range of characters. Also, I can't get enough of James's line right here. How brilliant! <laughs> wow. Alright, so here's the list. Everything highlighted in green is great, yellow is good, and red is, well, not so good. There is, for the most part, a definite theme of good episodes. I guess it's pretty hard to make a bad Christmas story with Thomas. I only wish we could still get good Thomas Christmas stories. Who knows? Maybe some of you guys have made some great ones. Let me know in the comments if you made some Christmas stories of your own, and I'll check them out. But, that's all I have for today, so, um... Merry Christmas, everybody, and I will see you, well, I guess whenever I make another CGI video. <laughs>